Hey, what's happening, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's me, Rocco, again, and, uh, you know, thanks for joining me today. And today I'm going to be doing something quite different from my usual videos. Normally I do in-depth album reviews and uh, discography rankings. So far I've done Sabbath, Genesis, Steely Dan. And I thought, you know what? Why not do a top 10 songs of a particular band? And today we're going to be talking about Rush's top 10 songs. And I was really hesitant about doing this. But uh, at the end of the day, I decided to do it because right now I've been on this huge rush kick, uh, of course, with Neil Pure passing away, unfortunately. Uh, I've really been listening to their discography nonstop just to celebrate just what a wonderful man, what a genius this guy was. And just to really pay tribute to one of my favorite bands. Needless to say, I've been listening to Rush all my life. I'm a huge fan. I'm actually a, pr a pretty big fanatic of Rush. They can do no wrong in my eyes. And... Uh, yeah, again, I was really debating this because to do like a Rush album discography ranking, I could definitely do that because to look at an album as a whole and see where it ranks among like maybe like 15 to 20 other albums isn't a big deal. I'm sure anyone could do that. But to look at an al a band with over, I'm sure they have over 150 to 200 songs and get 10 songs from that is nearly impossible. And at the end of the day, this list is really going to be changing from day to day, from month to month. Like, definitely a year from now, it's going to be completely different. I'd say only the top five are kind of set in stone, and the rest could easily change. So, this is really my list at the moment. But I thought, you know what? Why not? Any excuse to talk about Rush is a good excuse. So, why not make this video, get the discussion going, and uh, see what you guys think. I want to see some underrated picks in your top tens. So, comment down below, and, uh, you know, tell me how fucked up I am. Tell me how wrong I am. But uh, let me know. And at the end of the video, I'm definitely going to be doing like an honorable mentions uh, of like the 10 songs I would have that almost made the top 10. And there's really not much separating these songs apart. Like they're all pretty much equal at this point. So if you want to switch the order, be my guest. I'd say the top five are pretty much set in stone over the past like 10 to 12 years. They've been pretty much my favorites. So let's dive right into the list. And this is going to be a bit shorter than my other videos because... If you want to see my in-depth reviews, you can go ahead and check that out where I talk about the songs at great length. But here is just going to be a quick rundown of my uh, my rankings. So kicking it off with number 10, I got Working Man here. And this might be a surprise because a lot of Rush fans kind of consider their debut album to be their weakest and uh, the album that falls most out of line with their progressive rock and you know pop rock future. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. I'm a huge rock, hard rock fan. I'm a huge metal fan. And this album really speaks to me. My favorite song off that album by far is Working Man. It has one of their heaviest riffs, almost Sabbath-like. One of their greatest instrumental breakdowns. Oh man, Alex Lifeson's guitar playing and solos on that section just kill me every time. What a jam. And uh, it has John Rutsey on drums. So shout out to him for cracking into my top 10. Uh, so it just goes to show Rush pretty much mastered the hard rock genre before becoming the progressive rock giants they were. And yeah, Working Man's always been one of my favorites. It's always spoken to me. And uh, yeah, fantastic track. All the songs in the top 10 are 10 out of 10s, by the way. If, if you're a follower of my ranking, my rating system, all 10 out of 10s. Okay, number nine, we got The Garden from Clockwork Angels in 2012. Now, honestly, guys, I thought this would have been even higher. This song is one of my all-time favorites. All of these songs are. But this song here in particular, it's arguably my favorite ballad of all time. Or power ballad, whatever you want to call it. Right up there with the Rain song by Led Zeppelin. And so many others that I can't really think of right now. But it's such an emotional track. And really the swan song of Rush. It has such a closure to it. It has such a contemplative and reflective feel to it. It's got, you got the string arrangements going on, great Alex Lifeson guitar playing on it, and um, it just brings a tear to my eye every time. So just for the emotional factor alone, one of the best Rush songs and a great way to go out. You know, ask me tomorrow, ask me next month, it might even be in my top five, but right now it's going to be number nine. Number eight, we got subdivisions in the high school halls, in the shopping malls. From the Signals album, 1982. Man, what's there to say about this song? It's by far my favorite 80s Rush song. Oh, sorry, scratch that. My favorite synth era, if you want to call it that, Rush song. I keep forgetting Permanent Waves and Moving Pictures are both in the 80s. 
But yeah, Subdivisions is a fantastic song, uh, t talking about high school outcasts, some great synth playing in the background, just a perfect example of tasteful pop rock slash prog synth and rock work. Incredible. Uh, it has such a melancholic feel to it, and it's just... It's just amazing. Like, what's there to say about it? It's one of their biggest hits, and it just speaks to me on so many levels. So, subdivisions. Number eight. Uh, sorry, that was number nine. No, yeah, that was number eight. My bad. Number seven. Free Will from Permanent Waves. Now, Permanent Waves, if you've seen my review of that, you know how much I love that album. I'm pretty much obsessed with Permanent Waves. And uh, it was really hard picking, like, a favorite off the album. Uh, but Free Will... At the end of the day, it's just such a classic tune, and uh, fuck, what's there to say about it? It has one of my favorite Rush instrumental breakdowns in the middle, some of the best Getty Lee bass work on there, one of Alex Lifeson's greatest solos, and it has such an uplifting message, such, such an uplifting feel, and the amazing thing is, for a song like this with a relatively simplistic riff, in the best possible way, uh, kind of catchy, accessible tune that I've heard a million times, I have never gotten sick of this song. Not once in my life. It's always fresh. It's always amazing. And, you know, that really says something about it. So, Free Will from Permanent Waves is uh, my number seven. Number six, Spirit of Radio, also from Permanent Waves. Aha, see, I threw a curveball there. I bet you thought I only had Free Will from Permanent Waves. But no, Spirit of Radio, pretty much tied with Free Will. Uh, what's there to say about it? It's just has some of the two of the greatest Alex Lifeson riffs, one of the greatest Alex Lifeson solos, and it's just one of the most uplifting songs of all time, and everything I said about Free Will applies to this. I love the second half of the tune. It goes through so many changes, so many... Oh, my God, they throw reggae in there. There's some honky-tonk piano. It's got it all. It just pumps me up every single time. So Spirit of Radio comes in at number six. Number five from the Moving Pictures album. Red Barchetta. Man, this song here is just so inspiring. It tells an awesome story about, you know, this dystopian future where driving cars is outlawed. And uh, it tells the story of this, this kid finding his uncle's old Red Barchetta and driving in it. Again, just like Free Will, just like Spirit of Radio. It's so uplifting. And uh, honestly, it just makes me feel like I'm on, I'm on top of the moon every single time I hear it. Has one of the best outros of any Rush song. And, uh, yeah, one of the greatest. One of the greatest tunes. So that's number five, Red Barchetta. All right, guys, so coming in at number four, we got Xanadu from the Farewell to Kings album. This song here used to be my number one for, like, the longest time. And, uh, honestly, I like it no less than I used to. Just other songs kind of crept up and kind of, you know just inch themselves a little bit ahead of Xanadu, but it's still one of my favorites. I mean, what's there to say about this song? One of their most atmospheric songs. I love how the first four minutes of the song has no vocals, nothing against Mr. Geddy Lee, but I love how they really let the atmospherics take over and really allow the song to expand its sound with all the bells and, you know, all the, the bird chirping, the sound effects and everything. It just makes for a really atmospheric, really progressive song. And then when the vocals do come in, it's, it's just absolutely electrifying one of the catchiest Rush tunes, in my opinion. And uh, coming in at 11 minutes, it's a lot to handle, a lot to take in. So I think it really does take repeated listens to fully appreciate. But, you know, as a hardcore progressive rock fan, this song really speaks to me. And uh, it's always going to be one of my favorite Rush songs, hands down. I, I love the whole fantasy storyline, you know, how it shows the downsides of being immortal. Uh, really cool song. And uh, my favorite song off... Uh, farewell to Kings by a small margin. Um, so yeah, that's number four. Y you know what had to be on the list, guys? Cygnus X1 Book 2 Hemispheres, or as I like to call it, just simply Hemispheres. The title track from my favorite Rush album of all time, Hemispheres. This song here, I don't know what to say about it, guys. It's just fucking incredible. Everything about it, the storytelling, the metaphors, the lyrics... Everything in it is just incredible. And uh, really, this song here, it's... Oh, man, how do I describe it? If you want to like see my full explanation of it and analysis, check out my Hemispheres review on my channel. But uh, just to sum it up, it's basically a song describing 
the balance between the heart and the mind. And to be a functional society, a functional human being, we really need a balance between that. If you lean towards one versus the other, society just collapses and falls into chaos. And I just love that concept. Uh, the song goes through so many different changes. The first nine minutes feature basically two different... It has like a long extended overture, about four minutes in length. And then it has two main themes that go throughout the entire first nine minutes of the track. Uh, the God's theme, as I like to call it, and the human's theme, as I like to call it. So check out my review for more information on that. But basically, these two themes are just incredible. Feature some of the greatest riffs. So many time changes throughout the entire song. It's ridiculous. And uh, the nine-minute... Actually, before the nine-minute mark, all hell breaks loose. It goes through this incredibly atmospheric, moody section... Uh, near the middle of the track. Then again, all hell breaks loose later on in the song, and it closes one of the greatest acoustic kind of ballads of all time. Honestly, one of the best epic tracks, clocking in at around 20 minutes in length. I think 18 minutes to be exact, but let's just round it up for, you know, for fuck's sake. And uh, yeah, it's always been one of my favorites. So yeah, number three is Hemispheres. Number two... 2112, guys, the title track from their album, 2112. Uh, this song here, you know, if someone said this was their number one, I couldn't disagree with that. Like, this is arguably the best Rush song of all time. Uh, again, it's mostly just a hard rock song. It goes through a lot of changes, but really, like, in subdivided sections. Whereas, like, later on in their career, they would seamlessly incorporate transitions to glue the sections together. This song here is just a bunch of different songs kind of glued together, but it works perfectly as a whole. I mean, what's their, it's definitely much better than the Fountain of Lamneth from uh, Caress of Steel in terms of it working as a whole cohesive piece. One of the greatest storylines of any song of all time. Just basically, man, it's basically the story of this dystopian future uh, where, you know, music is not outlawed, but basically a, a figment of the past. And this one dude discovers a guitar and presents it to like the society at the time, the priests of the temples of Syrinx, who basically rule over this, this world. And they crush his spirit and he, you know, he ends up maybe killing himself, maybe not. And uh, that's a horrible summary of the storyline. So definitely check out my review of that if you want to get more in-depth information. But it's just one of the best songs, one of their heaviest tracks. The Overture section alone is arguably one of their greatest musical achievements. But the Discovery section is just beautiful. The Oracle section just gets stuck in your head. Some of the most intense Alex Lifeson riffs. And um, some extremely high-pitched singing from Getty Lee, to say the least. But yeah, 2112, honestly, one of the best. What can you say about it? It's just a classic. Uh, really put them on the map as well. And then number one, La Villa Strangiato. My favorite instrumental of all time. What's there to say about this song? It goes through so many, so many time changes. It's so complex, yet so memorable and so catchy. And uh, it has Alex Lifeson's greatest guitar solo, one of the most emotional and one of the greatest solos I've ever heard in my life, hands down. The Monsters theme is just pumps me up to the max. So many jazzy interludes. Just everything I love about progressive rock rolled into one instrumental. And uh, it, it had to be number one for me. I mean, I, I freaking love this song. If I had to take one Rush song to a desert island, this would have to be the one, which is the reason I put it at number one, because it just has so much to offer, so much to give, and it never gets old again. Every single time I hear it, fucking phenomenal. And uh, it's from the album Hemispheres. So really, if you think about it, this list has about 30 minutes of the album Hemispheres, which is a 37-minute album. So, you know, most of that album is on this list. So by far my favorite Rush album. And uh, La Villa Strangiato is a perfect distillation everything I love about this band. So uh, that's my top 10. Now let's dive into the honorable mentions. But before we get into the honorable mentions, let's just recap the list. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So number 10, we have Working Man. Number nine, we have uh, The Garden. Number eight, Subdivisions. Number seven, Free Will. Number six, The Spirit of Radio. Number five, Red Barchetta. Number four, Xanadu. Number three, 
Cygnus X1 Book 2 Hemispheres, or Hemispheres, if you want to call it that. And uh, number 2, 2112. Number 1, La Villa Strangiato. So, um, Hemisphere is definitely one, you know, the most representation on the top 10 list. Followed by, I believe, 2112, because it has, you know, obviously that 20-minute title track. But, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let's get into the honorable mentions. So, from Rush's debut album, Working Man is really the only song I would consider to be even close to cracking the top 10. So, let's just leave it at that. Fly By Night, Anthem. Okay, guys, Anthem was so close to being in the top 10. I was actually debating between Working Man and Anthem. Because just like Working Man, Anthem is one of their heaviest, their fastest paced, one of their most intense songs. And uh, it, it's honestly just on the verge of being in the top 10. So... If you want to put Anthem in your top 10, I would never disagree with that. On uh, Fly By Night, I can't really think of anything else. By Tour in the Snow Dog, not even close. I love that track, but it wouldn't be in my top 20, so forget about Fly By Night. Um, not that I don't love that album, it's just we're talking like the top tier shit here. Caress of Steel. Here's the interesting thing. Bastille Day is... Uh, I love that track, but I wouldn't put it in my top 20, so forget about that. Uh, the Necromancer, nah. Fountain of Lamneth, not really. But the, um, the uh, fuck, I'm forgetting the name of it. Part 3 of the song, I think No One at the Gate or No One at the Bridge or something, that could have been in my top 10 if it was like an individual song. I freaking love that section, so th that might be in my top 20, so we'll see. I don't know. Uh, 2112, the only one that really competes with the title track is Something for Nothing. So I've, that's always been one of my favorites, so that can easily be in my top 20. Uh, awesome track. Uh, Farewell to King, so many songs came close. Closer to the Heart, one of the greatest songs ever. The title track, Farewell to King, so underrated, so close to being in my top 10. Uh, could have easily have been there. And of course, Cygnus X1, Book 1, The Voyage. Uh, again, if you see my review of that, you know I have a few criticisms of it. It's a little bit too... It's too short at 10 minutes in length for the amount of ideas it presents. So that's kind of funny to say because 10 minutes is a long fucking time. And yet I consider it too short. Because really, like right when you're getting into a, a certain section, it just completely changes... And uh, for me, that's a little bit of a problem. But I love the song. It could have been... It's easily in my top 30, but maybe not in my top 20, but... I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, hemispheres, we got The Trees. The Trees was almost in my top 10. I was going to put this at number 10, but at the end of the day, I, got, I had to give it to Working Man. The hard rock fan of me was, like, revolting. But The Trees, the first Rush song I ever heard as a four-year-old child... Uh, it's lasted with me ever since, never got old. One of the best instrumental interludes of all time. And then we got Permanent Waves. This was tough, guys. I love Jacob's Ladder, but Natural Science was so close to being in the top 10. And honestly, I had to give it to Free Will. I had to give it to Spirit of Radio. Although those were like obvious choices and like big hits, I just had to do it. I had to be honest to myself. But Natural Science definitely right up there one of their most complex songs some of the greatest alex lifes and solos enough said uh next album moving pictures tom sawyer who doesn't fucking love that song yyz and um limelight all amazing just on the verge of being in the top 10 maybe like top 25 uh camera eye it's a big highlight with the fans but for me it's not one of my favorites but definitely one of the better Rush songs. So like in the top 30 to 40 for sure. Vital Signs and uh, Witch Hunt are also amazing. Signals. Oh, Signals. Okay, Losing It is one of the best Rush songs of all time. This could have been in my top 10. But uh, to be honest, it's probably my top 25 to top 30. But one of the greatest and most emotional Rush songs. Uh, Grace Under Pressure. We got Red Sector A being up there and After Image. Also, Between the Wheels is one of my favorites. Power Windows, Marathon, and Middle Town Dreams could have been in my top 35. Uh, Hold Your Fire, 
eh, probably just Time Stand still, but I really like Open Secrets as well and uh, Force 10. Presto, not much. Maybe The Pass. I don't know. Uh, Roll the Bones. Uh, I got nothing. Uh, Counterparts is an awesome album, but nothing would be even close to being in my top 10. Maybe Animate or Cut to the Chase or uh, Cold Fire, but they wouldn't be in my top 25 for sure. Test for Echo, really nothing. Vapor Trails, nothing. Uh, Snakes and Arrows, there's a few great tracks, but you know nothing I would consider to be in my top 25. Clockwork Angels! Okay, Caravan's fantastic. The title track, one of my favorite Rush songs. Uh, Headlong Flight's amazing. And... Mm, BU2B is amazing as well. But yeah. So, but really, uh, the only contender for being in my top 10 was The Garden. But that is an amazing album. My favorite album since Moving Pictures. So, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully this video gets the discussion going with Rush. Uh, again, that's my top 10. And I know there's a few hit songs in there that might have been obvious, but I can't help it, guys. Like, honestly. But needless to say, I'm a huge fan of every single Rush album. I've heard every single Rush, out, Rush song many, 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 many times over the past 15 years. And um, since I was like 9, 8 years old, I've been a huge Rush fan. So, uh... Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care and stay tuned for my uh, my next video. Thank you.